Hey over there, Joe Lunchbox. And today we have landed right here in Saugus, Massachusetts. Now we left, we're staying with some friends up in Alton Bay, New Hampshire. We started the ride home and we figured this video is going to be a hodgepodge of cool roadside stuff. We have some uh, Massachusetts largest. We have the first Dunkin' Donuts. We're going to actually go out to the tip of Cape Cod, eat some lobster. You know how to do it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be an adventure. We're happy you're coming along. If you like this kind of thing, we always appreciate if you like the video. If you're first time here, we'd always appreciate if you subscribe. And if it's your second time here and you haven't subscribed yet, you can subscribe too. If you haven't subscribed in general, now's a good time. Comment down below. If you're going to a seafood restaurant, what's your favorite seafood to get? Okay? Did it? Okay, good. Now it's time to do this. Step right up, let's go for this ride. Where we are starting this video, the road behind me right now is Route 1. It goes all the way from the top of Maine to the Florida Keys. We're gonna drive it for a little bit today because there is some stuff on it to see. But the question is, a lot of people do Route 66 and roads like that. We've been contemplating for years doing Route 1 from the top to the bottom. Would you like to see that as a road trip in the future? Let us know. But why do we stop randomly in a parking lot along Route 1? Mom's sitting in the van. The reason is, is this Italian restaurant, Prince, has a leaning tower of pizza. But there's this pizza. A leaning tower of pizza pizza. Definitely would qualify for us as a roadside attraction. A big piece of advertising put in front of a business. Well, in this case, on a business. As you're cruising down Route 1, make you stop go, you know what? I want pizza. It's good to start a video. I'm hungry now. You're hungry now? I don't think we're getting pizza though. Don't get the people excited. I think we're gonna continue down the road. Okay. We went from pizza. Let's see what else we find on this road. So, on our channel, we cover a lot of the world's largest. Be it one of the world's largest bowls of twines, world's largest rocking chairs, all the world's largest. Well, today, we're not covering a world's largest. We're covering a Massachusetts largest. We're still on Route 1, same town, but a little bit farther south on the road. That's right, Massachusetts' largest cactus is here on Route 1. It's basically just a giant sign advertising the shopping area, the hilltop, housing, the Avalon, all these little businesses. It is a cool sign and it is big. That is a big cactus. It is funny choosing a cactus to symbolize Massachusetts, but I ain't complaining, I like it. Whenever Joy and I are on the road, we always like to see if the city or the town has a local tiki bar. Very rarely is it a tiki restaurant. Now in this town is one of those tiki restaurants. Sadly, like I said, today is a day we're on the road. We are gonna stop, we are gonna show you a lot of things. We are planning to come back up to this northern part of Massachusetts later this year and hoping that this spot becomes a full video but just passing it. I couldn't drive by it, not stop, not show you. Cowlands, look at this giant carved tiki. The way the roof curves, almost looks like a canoe on the top. This spot is amazing. I love that spots like this still exist because sadly, stuff like this is falling to the wayside. But this one looks like it is going strong, and this is making me smile. Have any of you ever eaten here? How is it actually? I mean, I'm gonna eat here. It doesn't matter if food's good or bad. I'm gonna love it every second. I'm hoping the food's good. Because look at this. The giant tiki in front of it. The sign alone on the side of the building would stop and have me wanting to pull into this business. It looks like they even have comedy. And the front, which is their takeout area, looks more like a pagoda than a tiki theme. 
We had to run in and grab some tiki mugs for our collections. We're getting these two. They have a nice selection. Businesses like that are awesome. Imagine. Soldiers, sailors came back from World War II in the 40s. Became fascinated with spots like the South Pacific. That culture. This restaurant and this whole idea of tiki is because of that. This restaurant opened in 19... 50. It's a long time ago. Look at that. 74 years. Almost going on their 75th anniversary. Going strong. Awesome tiki mugs. So happy we got to stop. So happy we got to share with you. Continue down Route 1 to the last thing to see in this town. Little guy overlooking the road. A big orangey dinosaur. He is the remnants of an extinct mini golf attraction. And he became sort of like a, I want to say a town guard, a town mascot, permanently living now, overlooking Route 1. So, right now we are at a location that's going to be almost near and dear just because it's a spot that's close to my job, but it's very where we go and we get coffee. But the history behind this thing, before I tell you the name, you probably already know. We're also in Quincy, Massachusetts at oh, the moment. Sorry. We landed in Quincy, Massachusetts. Is a guy named William Rosenberg. In 1948, he had a shop that he opens up called Open Cattle. But wait, Joy, Joy. What? But it says established 1950. I was gonna say, but two years later, he decided to open a spot called. What? What did he sell in Open Cattle? He sold coffee. And what else? And donuts. Oh, coffee and donuts. Mm -hmm. That sounds like something else from Quincy, Massachusetts. It does. Like I was gonna say, two years later, Dunkin' Donuts. That's right. One of the architectural executives was talking to him and talking about how people dunk their donuts in their coffee and they decided to change the name in 1950 to Dunkin' Donuts. And this air right here isn't just any Dunkin' Donuts. This is that original Dunkin' Donuts. 1948 then switched the name to 1950 so in 1950, we are standing in front of the original Dunkin' Donuts. It's nuts to think. We're all started here. Right now, there is 12,500 Dunkin' Donuts across 46 countries, 9,000 of them in the United States. All because a man opened up a little coffee and donuts stop right here on the road in Quincy. So this is it, Joy, the original site of Dunkin' Donuts. 543 Southern Artery, Quincy, Massachusetts. Established 1950. What's really cute is above my head, you see like the little um, old school. The cars the parked cars, in front yeah. of it. <laughs> they actually have merch from America's finest handmade donuts, world's finest coffees from the original building. We have a wall with Duncan history of an icon. We have the different logos over the years. I miss being a kid watching the old Dunk commercials. The guy time to make the donuts. They made them, they're right there. And their coffee here is on tap. This is the coolest thing. They have half coffee. It's another plaque saying the same thing that we did before. It's really cute inside because now it's the coffee instead of the donuts which is outside. This is the same. Dunkin' Donuts was first opened in 50 on the site in Quincy, Massachusetts. We went. We saw. We conquered. Joy got a nice coffee. And I have to say, if you're in Massachusetts, you have to be a nut <laughs> not to go and stop at the very first time going. She also got a t-shirt. But when I mean you have to be a nut, well, if you are, you can get a butternut butter donut. <laughs> oh, yeah. Really, guy? Mm. And I do like to tweak mine. I got s'mores and an extra mocha shot. It's good, but onward. 
back to the road. really excited. I'm going to bring you along to a spot i never been, so I'm so happy to bring you for the first time. We are here in Plymouth, Massachusetts, and standing behind me is Plymouth Rock. That's right. This is where, in December of 1620, the Mayflower landed and stepped foot on American soil. We're out looking at the harbor. We can see in the distance the Mayflower has landed. You see the Mayflower actually was in Provincetown Harbor since November 11, 1620, but they had to wait to sort of build their governing lore body. And you know who did that? John Carver. He wrote the Mayflower Compact, which was the first document to make this Plymouth colony. All those separatist Puritans came over and now they're ready to try their new lives here in America after stepping right here. We do know those pilgrims here. It doesn't end well for a lot of them. John Carver, he didn't last that much longer. Sadly, his wife didn't make it through that first winter either. Neither of them had, but it did start the Plymouth Colony, start in Massachusetts. One day, I wanna come here and share the whole story of that with you. There's so much more history here, but today we are here to look at Plymouth Rock. If you come to Plymouth, it's right on Water Street, right on the water. As you're driving down, you can't miss it. This pavilion they built housing the rock. Joy, I heard this exhibit really rocks. And there it is. Plymouth Rock. You can see it's carved in 1620. And it looks like at one point it split in half and they cemented it back together. Sitting right there in the water. Could you imagine the Mayflower coming in? Stepping foot first time on this rock. I mean, no one really knows if it's truthfully the rock. It's more of a good symbol. Yeah, it's a rock. Yeah. yeah. It, it's funny people, little kids going like, but, but we came here to look at a rock? And uh, yes, that's what we're all here to do. We're all here to look at this rock. So. You might have been curious, was the rock always a small? No, it actually was bigger. But people to get souvenirs used to come with hammers and chisels, and chisels off piece of the rock. And that's why it's this size now. And the Mayflower didn't land here. The water's much too shallow. It actually was a mile and a half out. And they had to come in, in smaller vessels. And this is the rock is more here to symbolize where they stood when those little vessels came on and when they came ashore in December of 1620. We have fun facts. You see the original base the rock sat within. A busy wharf in 1855, the rock was swept off from time to time and a hammer chisel reportedly kept nearby for souvenir seekers. Imagine they actually kept the hammer and chisel there. And then we could see the rock actually being moved to a pedestal and this portico was built in 1620 and the two halves of the rocks are stabilized. Another cool information, I don't know if you noticed when Joe was reading that little sign. It's had in 1774, the rock split in two. Oh no! Looking at the replica of the Mayflower, it's crazy to think. Plymouth, America's hometown. This was the site of the first permanent English colonist in New England. And there it stands now, the Mayflower too. That's right, it's not the Mayflower. But this was built in England by shipbuilders by hand to be an exact replica of the Mayflower. So it is cool that we have it sitting here now. You can go take tours, we just wanted to share it with you. Gotta get back to that road. Awesome picture of the Mayflower too, actually coming into New York City Harbor when it first came over, its arrival on July 1957. It's crazy to think it had to get over here the same way as the first one did. This is a plaque honoring the people that sailed the ship from Plymouth, England to Plymouth, Massachusetts, April 20th to June 13th, 1957.
been driving for a while. Made our next stop. You might be thinking, you came from New Hampshire and you're going back home to New York. And I'd be like, yeah, you're right. We drove through Massachusetts, Plymouth, then head over. No, no, no. We went. And right now, we're at the tip of Cape Cod in Provincetown. My mom, this is our favorite town in the world. We haven't been here in 38 years since I've been a little boy, four years old. And she's like, I wish we could go there. I'm like, well, why can't we? So we're here. Joy, we made it. Wait, I thought I was in Massachusetts. Which way the lobster pot, buddy? Oh, that way? Okay, thanks. And this is the reason we are here, the lobster pot. Mom loved this restaurant, so did I when I was a kid. I took Joy 24 years ago, probably. And we're back. <laughs> yummy, yummy, yummy. I'm gonna have some lobster in my tummy and I'm geek. I'm feeling all right. Codfish. Did you call me a codfish? Do I look like Captain Hook? Sort of. Is that why you called me it? Yeah. I thought because you were reading the menu. Well, okay, that. We made it, Mom. We're at the lobster pot. Oh, yes. I love the lobster pot. This reminds me of when I was a, a young lady. I probably would have been, uh, how old was I when I first came here? Probably about 25, 26. Before you were born, Joe. And we came up here to Provincetown with your father saw the family and had a great vacation, rented a house, and then we came to Provincetown and like, my life was reborn because the town was such a bustling, a great town, so much to do, so much good karma going on, and we ate at the lobster pot. And the lobster pot, I might have been maybe the second or third time in my life I had lobster, and every year, four other times after that, we've come to the lobster pot. And now it's been many, 38 many years. 38 years. 38 years. And I'm, We're getting, back. I'm getting older, and I always tell you, Joe, that this is my favorite place on earth, is Cape Cod. And we're here. And we're here, and we're on the waiting list, and we're here, and we're gonna do it, and we're gonna have lobster, and I'm ecstatic. And it's gonna be awesome. Such a great view. Well, you, Joyce, but look outside. We can see the water. Worth the trip. And just like that, it's gone. So good. I'm not a lobster pot. I have to go for the lobster cake. <laughs> we're, we're in Massachusetts, so I got a wicked pizza. Oh my gosh. And then I got a hot lobster roll. All right. I like the plate itself. It's this lobster pot it's right there. <laughs> I have some steamed mussels. Mom, Mom got steamed mussels and also lobster bake. Oh, we'll see you all later. So what would you think, Ma? I was worth the wait. Very good. I'm so stuffed. It was so good and so buttery and so lobstery. And, oh. I love that spot. Ooh. Ooh, maybe next time we'll do some whale watching. I feel like if you see me walking down the road after that meal, you're doing some whale watching. We're going down the Bob Gasoy Memorial Art Alley. Already look a mermaid getting tattooed. Oh, this is the kind of thing I look for. The tattooed guy almost reminds me of Vic the Geek, but he doesn't have outer space tattooed on his face. I love you. You never know what you're gonna find. Nice it is. Wow. He's the artist. Alright. And here is Shop that represents the Bob Gossa Memorial Art Gallery by Arnie Charnick and Bo Johnson. The jigsaw figured along with 
The Alice Traction by Bob Gasoy, 1931 to 1997. Oh. Don't miss Octopiece, 10 by 60 mural, make a right on Commercial Street. Wow, lots of stuff to see. Looks like a very popular rally at the moment. And these Jiso figures are remnants from murals by Bob Kessoy. See different inspiration like Alice in Wonderland. Off with their head. Oh, it looks like someone already lost their head. What are you looking at, Mad Hatter? Some real gladiators using a big cat versus some sort of mythical rhino. And here we have a coastline mural made by the Coastline Crew 2017. Coastline Crew is a tattoo shop over here. Awesome mural of a whale. See the sailor is actually like piloting the whale. The whale itself has some American traditional tattoo designs on it. And here's the mural done by the tattoo shop. And right over there is the tattoo shop. That's a bunker. Water can. Look at those golf poles coming down the wires. <laughs> it's time to make like a fish and swim out of Cape Cod. So there you have it. I know. You're like, this looks different. Yes, a few days have passed. I'll tell you why. So we had a good day coming home. Ate some great seafood, saw some cool roadside attractions. But when we left Cape Cod, driving home, as soon as we hit Connecticut, there used to be a Stuckey's. And I'm like, we're gonna film this video and end it at Stuckey's. Oops. Well, by the time we got there, Stuckey's is out of business. They still sell Stucky products, but it's a different gas station. And Joy was asleep. I was. And I wasn't just gonna show you a random gas station that has a pecan roll. I mean, I love a pecan roll, but it wasn't worth sharing. But everything else was worth sharing. So by the time we got home, she was asleep in the car. We just unloaded our stuff and went to bed. But we're saying goodbye to you now. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're doing. So, the drive from New Hampshire to Cape Cod and home. Been there, done that. Remember folks, safe travels. Good eats. And live life. Is that the Mona Lisa sticking its tongue out at me?